right, so we are now going to an our talk. Uh, we have the, the day beginning with Mala Sen. I would like to invite her onto the stage. Hello. Mala is our director at Niku Games. Um, they are based in Chandigarh. And uh, they're building a new game. And um, it's all already started getting recognition at multiple international game events and stuff. She would today talk about how to use art, especially traditional art, to create captivating world. And um, after this session, there are a couple of more art talks, but they go to a different hall. So if you're following the agenda, please look up for it. But for now, Mala, most welcome. I'm so excited to listen to what you have. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. So that's me. I'm Mala. I used to be a textile artist. And uh, sometime around 10, 12 years ago, a dear friend of mine introduced me to this movie. Indie Games movie, and it's about uh, three indie game developers and their journey, and that movie blew my mind. And that was the first time I realized that there's a lot of art in games. So that really, you know, uh, enticed me, and I thought a game development was a field that I might be good at. So this is the game that we launched earlier this year at the Palace on the Hill. It's about this teenager in the, living in a small fictional village in the 90s, and uh, his dream is to go to art school. So we started Palace on the Hill in 2020, the concept of it, and along the way, lots of uh, really good things happened for us. Uh, we got really good uh, response for the prologue on Steam and in Google Play Store. And we got, uh, we were fortunate enough to get the ID at Xbox DAP grant. And uh, we were part of the Green Delivery program. And we also got a grant from the Indian government. So that really helped us and gave us validation to complete the game. And we launched in June this year. So I want to talk about, uh, you know, art in games. And uh, how, like, why did I give up my career in textile art and switch to game dev. It's because the idea that my art could create a world in which a player could like walk in, live in, and interact with, that really appeals to me. And I felt like, you know, that's, that's the best way to express myself. Uh, so as games are a really expressive medium for all kinds of fields, like art, music, writing, um, etc., I switched. So there are like so many ways in which, uh, so many mediums in which a player, I mean, a person's imagination can be captured. And uh, some of the ones that you might know, I mean, which you are probably familiar with, is with film and uh, music, um, writing, and the list goes on and on. Like in like in film, the the art and the visuals really plays a role in telling stories. And, cap and communicating feelings of what the director wants to say. And in music also, it's very, soundtrack really can, you know, bring emotion into the story you're telling. In theater, it's about expression, acting, costume. The costume of a person can tell you so much about a person, the character's background, the current circumstance, and also what, what is their self-image, what do they think about themselves. And my personal favorite is writing. In ri there are no visuals in writing, but it's just such an amazing medium to capture a per person's imagination and make them believe in something, which they can only see through their own imagination. And the list goes on. Of course, games is like a huge thing. There is writing, music, art, animation. There is so much, uh, so many different ways to tell a story in games. So I was, uh, as I said earlier, I was traditional art. I didn't know anything about digital art. So I was really scared, like, how do I start making games and how do I put my art in games? So luckily, there were a lot of examples for me to draw on, which, had, which were made by small teams and which had art which I felt was very attainable to me. And slowly, I realized that just how is, as how is it is in, in traditional art, it's not really about how beautiful the art is, but more about what you want to say with that art. So I realized that each and every game made by these small teams had a unique identity. And I wanted to break down like how to create that identity, identity to your game with like limited resources. So there's a focus, there's like 
an important thing that game dev wants to convey with their games, and that is the focus. Like for an example, in the game Sanbo, it's a horror game. So that's the main focus I want to make. They wanted to make a horror game. And then the theme of that game is, it deals with the mental trauma of a child. So you can see a, lo a lot of the elements and art in the game is a mix of creepy and cute. So there's lots of dolls and cute animals and things, but it, ha but it deals with that mental trauma of that child. So it's depicted in a, in a way in which a child would feel fear and horror. And consistency, so the artist of this game was a self-taught artist and a self-taught game dev. So you can see there's a lot of raw edges, there's a lot of wonky perspectives, but all of this is consistent throughout the game. So it really helps in immersing a player while they're playing the game. They start believing in that wonky perspective. And so many times, like, you might even, you might have experienced it in games like Minecraft. It, it doesn't look real at all. It's blocky. It's, like, so different from what you're used to. But, you know, one way of playing Minecraft when you feel like, why am I living in this world? Why can't I live in that world? So that's where we come to Palace on the Hill. So the focus of Palace on the Hill was a village adventure. So I wanted to have, like, a, a village scene, and there's, like, an adventure, and you explore, and you have a kid exploring a little bit. So that's my main focus. And what is the vibe? So I wanted, uh, my main vibe of the game was to be like a cozy summer holiday. So I wanted elements of warmth. I wanted elements of winter. I wanted, um, not winter, sorry. Um, I wanted elements of like nature. And I wanted uh, a feeling of exploration where a kid gets to explore the entire village and find lots of nooks and crannies and find all sorts of things you would find in a little Indian village. So. I really uh, wanted to go for a cozy vibe with the calm themes, and uh, I wanted the game to be, you know, tell the story of Indian art. So the Indian, like a lot of Indian art has a very special color palette, so it's a lot of rich earthy tones. So that was very important for me to uh, display in, in uh, the game. So that's how I maintain consistency throughout the game. So I just want to like press off on the fact that even like sometimes when you look at other games online, you feel like you can feel so intimidated like games, there are games that are so beautiful. But I think it's really important that even if you don't feel like your art is up to the mark or you can't, you keep comparing yourself to art which you find beautiful, if you're consistent with your art at whatever level or quality it is, you can make a very convincing and beautiful world that a player will fall in love with and want to live there. So the inspiration for the Palace on the Hill came from like our travels. Uh, there was this one trip that we took to Rajasthan and in this place called Kumbhagar Fort. So there were many tourists who were going to the main fort. But around this fort there were a lot of like small hills with like very quiet, calm and lonely ruins over there. So we decided to hike there. There was no plaque telling us like what this ruin is about, but it was just so mysterious. And from those hills you could like see down to a village where there's like it which was nestled in a little valley and it was just a serene and calm kind of a place that I felt like this would be such a great setting for an adventure game. And as many of you traveled probably travel in India you would find lots of these ruins dotted in the countryside and if you go and ask a villager like what is the story behind these ruins. So there will always be this like, you know, very like gossipy story about you know, Raja who used to live there and this Raja had like this wife and they had a second wife and that led to so much problems. So these are stories which is really fun when you talk to someone who lives there and they tell you like a like juicy gossip. So that was the uh, inspiration and premise for Palace on the Hill. So I wanted to like mostly when people in like in the global sense think of India, they think of like a very crowded market scene, gullies. Uh, festivals like Holi where it's like chaos and there's like autos and things like that. But I wanted to show like a different side of India which is not very uh, well known, which is like calm, serene, beautiful village with like mysterious ruins surrounding. So, so, I w so what all are the things which, you know, what we can include, what I want to include in the game to make it, you know, to uh, make it more like villagey. So I found like a lot of real world experiences of me traveling through villages and I put those into the game like uh, like the hand pump that was very important to us to show that like uh, if many of you have done road trips in India you would probably see the scene like 
a bunch of people outside like sitting around the hand pub having a bath early in the morning like the whole body will be covered with white soap and they'll be like scrubbing and seem to be having such a good time and i myself am very fortunate to have had that experience as a child uh, when we were traveling going with my dad early in the morning wearing a t-shirt and shorts and having a bath to get water from the hand pump so that's not an experience you'll find in any other game and that's not an experience people uh, in other countries really know about So we wanted to have a serious story with the Palace on Hill, but we also wanted to show cozy scenes from there. So for an example, we have like the village tea shop. Uh, if any of you have gone on road trips, you would definitely have been like keeping your eyes peeled to, for roadside dhabas so that you can stop and have tea, have snacks, and you know smell that whole tandoori fire. So that's what I wanted to show. I wanted to show like a dimly lit, bustling place by just looking at the screen, I wanted the players to smell the tandoor and feel hungry. So that was why we had like this kind of lighting with like orange tones to sort of, um, to, you know, make that kind of feeling. Um, so we also wanted to uh, talk about like our childhood as teenagers. Many of you might have had like a special friend or a crush or someone whom you were very close to whom you roamed around with and did all sorts of things and that person will have a special, you know, place in your heart. There might have been really nice memories where you had a conversation under the moonlight in like a serene village like this. So here our character, main character, he is unique to speak girl. He's from the village and she's from the city. And I wanted like their clothing to even emphasize that. So she's wearing like the cool jacket, hoop earrings and like and her hair was like the stylish from the 90s and she's like this cool city girl and he's just this very simple village boy and there's a tension between them and there's a class difference between them and I wanted that to show even in the way they're clothed. So I wanted to show uh, this uh, our character's you know, journey as an artist. So in the game, uh, he gets an opportunity by the school principal who is supposed to organize an exhibition to promote culture. Obviously, no one cares about art and neither does the principal. So at the last minute, he just wrote, this kid will do with art. So he was given a very empty, plain space in the school, which is just this room. And he's the only one who's displaying art there. So I, I, it's a very simple way to show, like this empty hall with only your art over there is completely, there's nobody else participating. It's like a very simple way to show like the loneliness an artist feels because they're different and no one understands what they're doing. So we obviously have literally come with all these quirky characters. So I wanted to show their, you know, uh, the character through their costumes and the way they talk. So here we have the vegetable seller, which is a famous set in the 90s. I don't know how many of you would remember that, but back in the 90s, there were a lot of instances where ladies wouldn't wear blouses. They would just wear the sarees just like that. Like, so the blouse is not a very Indian thing that came like with the British. So now it's a le less common, but those days it used to be a lot more common. So that's how we show that. And we want to show the principal, who's an arrogant person. He ha holds a government job in a government school, and his outfit is like, you know, the jacket, the vest, you know, has like a very politician kind of a vibe. And we also wanted to show traditional ha handicrafts with pottery and other things. So I wanted to uh, talk a little bit on how we created the art since I was very inspired by illustrations and story books. We wanted a very papery feel uh, to the game. So to create that, I just had these uh, watercolor papers where I painted large swatches of paint and I used those as textures for all the assets in the game. So that's how you can see that everything has like a consistent papery style and it also helps me stick to a color palette because I have only those colors to work with, which is what I painted on the papers. So I have like a green paper, I have a brown paper, I have a red paper, and the way the watercolors merge in the paper it really lends that papery feel to the, to the assets in the game. So it's essentially a game made with 2D assets, but we wanted like a isometric view where the player could run around and feel a sense of space. So to create that, we made we split buildings into layers. So there's like a front layer, then there's like the ground layer, then there's the back layer, and there's an in-between layer. So by layering those in the game, we could create a sense of space where we could 
run behind the pillar and emerge from the other side and sort of feel like a 3D world in which you can live in. So I wanted to show um, showcase Indian art in the game. So a lot of Indian art is done in villages. There's a lot of folk art in India, like Madhubani and Padua. So my main inspiration was miniature art. Which in miniature art was used to tell stories. And miniature art from the Kangra region in the Himachal was so to, I mean, was made to tell love stories. So since there is an element of an art mechanic in the game where uh, you discover a love story in a princess, I thought that's a great way to uh, show off a bit of Indian art to the world by having the paintings made in game follow an Indian miniature art style. So that's it. I hope like you learned something and if you are if you are also making a game which and you want to tell a story, please know that we are not alone. There are people like us who are also trying to make a name for ourselves in the global game dev scene. Please reach out with any questions or anything. That's it. <laughs>